Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Rentgenograms reveal two to three millimeters of bone loss around the mandibular left cuspid and first bicuspid teeth. The second bicuspid and first molar have a similar amount of bone loss. There is also evidence of bone loss in the bifurcation of the first molar. These rentgenograms were obtained before the calculus had been removed. A University of Michigan number zero probe is used to survey the depth and topography of the periodontal pockets. Some of the pockets are intrabony in character. Probing is also performed on the lingual and interproximal aspects of the teeth. The pockets are considerably deeper interproximally than buccally and lingually, which indicates a possible interproximal cratering of the bone. The area has now been anesthetized. The first method of subgingival curatage to be demonstrated in this film utilizes a pollock curette to remove the epithelial lining of the pockets as well as the underlying chronically inflamed connective tissues. The epithelial lining can be scraped off with careful and deliberate strokes. A finger may be held against the gingival tissue to facilitate the curatage. This curette is very thin and sharp and must be used with great care. However, it still may be impossible to avoid separating the buccal and lingual aspects of the interproximal tissues during the curatage. The area is again probed to make certain that no part of the pockets has been overlooked during the curatage. The lingual and interproximal pockets are then curetted and the entire interproximal pocket lining removed. If separation occurs between the buccal and lingual papillae, they may be sutured together later or held firmly together by a surgical dressing. This curatage includes the removal of chronically inflamed connective tissues lining the gingival wall of the periodontal pockets. By removing the epithelial lining of the periodontal pocket, curatage removes a barrier to reattachment of the periodontal fibers. Upon completion of the soft tissue curatage, the root surfaces are planed with curettes. It is important that the entire exposed root surface be thoroughly curetted during this procedure. The removal of surface cementum and dentine, in addition to removing local irritants, prepares the root so that new cementum may be deposited on its freshened surface. In the course of healing, 
new cementum is more likely to be deposited on a clean surface than on contaminated cementum. Curatage and root planing are also performed on the labial or buccal aspects of the teeth. Root planing with a curette will unavoidably remove some of the soft tissues in addition to the epithelial lining which was removed during the initial curatage. Curatage and planing of the root surfaces are time-consuming procedures and meticulous accuracy is required to assure good results. It is essential, however, that the root surfaces be clean, smooth, and free of any contaminated cementum or dentine to provide the maximum opportunity for the deposition of new connective tissue. The separated interproximal papillae should be gently pressed together. Subsequently, they will be held together by a periodontal dressing. The periodontal pockets around the second bicuspid and the first molar will be treated by subgingival curatage using conventional periodontal curettes. The most accurate method of detecting and evaluating pockets is by a careful exploration with a pocket probe or explorer. After the pockets have been surveyed, curatage of the root surfaces is begun. The importance of this procedure cannot be overemphasized. Complete removal of all softened cementum, dentine, and irritating deposits is essential to provide the maximum opportunity for reattachment of soft tissues and regeneration of cementum. Note the thoroughness of the curatage and root planing on the mesial, buccal, and distal aspects of the second bicuspid tooth. This mirror view shows the use of the curette on the mesial surface of the first molar. The pocket depth is now probed on the lingual aspects of the same two teeth. The level of attachment of the base of the pocket relative to the cemento enamel junction is of greater significance than the depth of the pocket itself. Root curatage and planing is started at the mesial-lingual aspect of the second bicuspid and continued in a distal direction to the mesial surface of the first molar. Some degree of irritation and trauma to the gingiva is unavoidable with scaling and curatage, even if it is performed with extreme care. It is essential, however, that all irritating substances be removed from the tooth to facilitate reattachment of the periodontal fibers. The planed tooth surfaces should be carefully explored with a number 3 or number 17 explorer. This probing should be done lightly so that any minute roughness on the root surface can be detected. If residual roughness is felt, such as noted here on the distal surface of the second bicuspid, 
the area must be re-curetted, planed, and again checked. The interproximal and lingual surfaces are also carefully explored for any residual roughness. When the root planing has been completed, the soft tissue walls of the pocket in this area are curetted from the lingual aspect. Removing the epithelial lining of the periodontal pocket is important to facilitate reattachment of the periodontal fibers to the root surface. If the epithelial attachment is not completely removed, reattachment of the periodontal fibers will not occur. The curette removes degenerated tissue, proliferating epithelial projections, and clinically inflamed connective tissues. This creates a bleeding connective tissue surface and a clot will form between the teeth and soft tissues. After curatage has been completed from the lingual aspect, the buccal and interproximal tissues are treated in a similar fashion. Note the position of the tip of the curette as it is used to remove the epithelial lining around the bicuspid and molar teeth. This procedure must be thoroughly done using careful and deliberate strokes. The sharp end of the instrument contacts the tissue and must be used with great care. However, the curetting must be continued until one is assured of complete removal of all pocket lining. The lingual and buccal papillae are pressed together with the blunt side of the instrument. The fingertips are lubricated with Vaseline and the dressing rolled into an elongated cylinder. This is then flattened and a strand of cotton incorporated into the dressing to facilitate its retention around the necks of the teeth. An instrument is used to press the dressing into the interproximal spaces. This holds the papillae together. Vaseline is applied over the dressing so that it can be adapted to the tissue with the finger. The cheek is drawn up to eliminate any interferences. The dressing is also checked on the lingual side. It should be removed after one week and the teeth polished. This is the clinical appearance of the mouth five months post-operatively. Satisfactory physiotherapy has been maintained by the patient. Probing reveals shallow gingival crevices. The tissue now presents a normal color and surface texture, and the gingival margin is well adapted to the teeth.
You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.